Now, the nation is still in shock over the Kapangaria siege that left eight officers dead. The families of the slain are mourning their lives cut short. While the actions of the slain gunman, a police constable, have no justification, the state is left to address the serious concerns that are evident from the killings. Many are now calling for further scrutiny in police recruitment as the president issued a statement promising to support the victims' uh, families. Dorcas Mangira has that story. The walls of the Kapenguria police station headquarters bear mute witness to the 10-hour bloodbath that left six officers, their OCS commander, and one Reiki squad officer dead. The seven officers may not have anticipated that one of their own, the slain gunman, police constable Abdi Hakim Masla, force number 101777, would go to that extent. Masla had gone off duty Wednesday night, and his arrival in the wake of Thursday morning initially would not have aroused any suspicion. I called the chaplain and uh, he told me he is among the officers who have tried to rush to the report office to find what was going on. And uh, when he was approaching that head, he was shot at. But now it is imagined that his criminal intent had almost everything to do with the detainee, Omar Owaki Umod, a primary school teacher arrested on suspicion of having terror links. Prior to his arrest, he was in constant communication with Masler, recently graduated from the police college. There are reports that the young constable was unhappy with his work. He had earlier and successfully requested to be relieved of his duty and was under police radar for his behavior. Police officers reconstructing the event say Masler was frustrated that he could not free the terror suspect and grabbed a gun from the duty officer, killing his colleagues. Okwaki survived the carnage. However, he was arraigned in an Eldoret court under secret circumstances today. We spoke to the head teacher of Lake Victoria Primary School in Kachaliba, where he taught for the past two months before he was detained. What kind of person was he? Okay, so we were Mhm. Eh, tapi yang saya kata, ulu mana mana kagak muslim. Mhm. Pasal apa? Aja nyonya nindefu. Mhm. Apa yang dia nak fikir? Waktu tu kami suku ye, ya kawan bah ye, ye ni, ye tu, ye ni kagak. Dia. Eh, ni tu tu. Sila, okey aje nindefu ni revu kan. But the pain is felt most by the families of all those slain. The widow of the station's OCS, Inspector Vitalis Ochido will have to stay strong for her family. Nalikuwa a good husband, a good dad. Alikuwa anapenda watoto wake. Kwa kazi, yani hata actually wakati aliuawa, alitoka kwa ofisi saa tano. Kuna wengine wamebaki, hawana kazi, watoto wako university. The incident reveals that terror is still a present reality and the presence of homegrown and growing terror cells cannot be ignored. The West Pokot Governor Simon Kachapin has asked the government to devolve key security apparatus like the Rekha Squad to the county level and subject the police recruitment exercise to further scrutiny. More intelligence must be done within the police to weed, to weed out such people. It will be easy, but resources must be done so that within all the counties, a thorough investigation and thorough uh, monitoring. The president today released an official statement, in part mourning the young men who died defending the nation from what was referred to as a depraved killer, promising that, and I quote, my government security and investigative agencies will do all within their power to discover what motivated this attack. But a promise was made, and I quote, In days to come, my government will give their families every support as they come to terms with these tragic events, end of quote. A personal promise to the families of Chief Inspector Vitalis Ochido, GSU Reckless Squad Officer Dennis Mumani, Corporals Wilson Karani, Katana Kitu, and Gideon Oching, Police Constables Robert Kinyo and Cornelius Rono, who paid the ultimate prize. History will judge harshly if this promise is not kept. While the president maintains that Kenya remains strong, a country of law and order, not violence and hatred, the frustration in the deeds of a single man and his motivation cannot be taken lightly. Dorcas Wangira, KTN News.